<clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? Anyways, now that I got that out of my system, if you don't know what that is, check out my vlog. Uh, just talking about some of the noise complaints I've been getting from my neighbors, involving them hearing my voice, and kind of how I felt about it. Um, it was long and rambling. I didn't get to my point that well, but anyways, that's all of my videos. So, um, this time I'm going to talk about a movie called Another Earth, a uh, low budget, independent sci fi drama. Uh, made kind of a splash, I think, last year at Sundance. <clears throat> I just saw it recently on DVD, just recently came out on DVD. And my thoughts on it were I, I was actually really into it for the most part, for most of it. And then it kind of like went the usual indie route with this ambiguous ending. It was, you know, it's okay. Like, I like ambiguous endings. I write ambiguous endings sometimes when I write. Like, I have an idea for a story that has an ambiguous ending. But it's hard to pull off. And I'm not saying I'm good at pulling it off. I'm criticizing someone else, which is a lot easier, okay? So, the ending was a letdown on this one. Uh, Another Earth is about this girl. Interesting premise. Very bright girl. She's about to go to, she just got accepted to MIT. She wants to be an astronomer. She's interested in space and science. And she drinks one night, gets in an accident, and kills a family in a car, except for the dad. The dad is the only one that survives. But the mom and the, and the kid get killed. She goes away for four years. She gets out. Uh, she feels terrible about herself. You know, she's not the same person anymore. She does some janitor work at a high school. and But she wants to go say sorry to the dad. She goes to go say sorry. She, she seeks this guy out. She goes to go say sorry. And she loses her nerve. Like, you know, she, she can't say it. So she pretends that she's a maid offering like a free trial maid service. And so he's his life is still wrecked too. He lets her in to clean up his place. There's like beer bottles and shit everywhere. <coughs> and you know, things slowly develop towards them. Like they build some sort of relationship. Is it romantic? I'll leave that for you to find out. And then on top of that, always playing in the background, there's this sci-fi element going on where the night that she got into this accident, another Earth was discovered. And what does that mean? It's like there's another planet in the sky that they can see looks exactly like Earth. It's probably identical to Earth. And so that's going on, like these two stories, you know, you have the human drama and like the, the pure science fiction part going on. And, uh, or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Going through this whole story. And I was really into the human drama. I thought it was uh, pre pretty well done for the, the, the size of this film. Like, I felt for her. I felt for the guy. I thought uh, the girl, Britt Marling, gave a good performance. And I'd like to see more from her. Um, the guy, I don't remember his name, but he was good in it too. And I felt for their story. I cared about it. I cared, I, I liked the idea of, it's weird that I would sympathize more with her, but I liked the idea of this girl who had everything ahead of her. She's a bright kid, very smart, and she fucked up once. And, you know, now she's paying for it and she feels really bad. But I also just, I like the, the guy too, you know, he lost his family, he's trying to pick up the pieces, but he can't. And it makes for good drama, and the drama is at the heart of this film, and it's and it's good, right? <clears throat> and then you have the sci-fi element, which I thought was also very interesting. There's this other Earth, it looks just like, I don't get how it just appears in the sky out of nowhere that's close enough where it looks like as big as the sun or the moon. I don't get that, but I like the idea that, oh, there's this other Earth out there. And the idea 
the conceit or whatever behind this is like, well, you know, if there's another Earth and it's exactly like ours, then it's probably inhabited by humans and it's probably exactly like ours. But what if it's like some quantum physics shit and it's like somehow one of our alternate realities or our, like, you know, in quantum physics, I think you kind of picture life as like a tree with different branches or like where every like big thing that happened to you, it branches off and something else could have happened. And that actually exists too in its own reality. But what if one of those other realities somehow came into existence in our reality i thought that's interesting i think that's kind of where they're going with it they don't push it on you like explaining it but they do kind of bring up the idea of well if that's the case then there's another you on that other earth who could possibly be living a different life and it could be you know completely different and I liked that idea looming over their whole relationship and like or in, and the events in this movie like well what if there's a version of what if there's a version of the girl who didn't get in a drunk driving accident that, that night and just went on to live a great life and what if there's a version of the guy who didn't get in the accident that night and his family's still alive right and that's kind of like the question they try to throw in there. That kind of looms over the whole thing, right? <clears throat> but that element, the sci-fi element, I don't think they do enough with it. As interested as I was, and as much as I loved a lot of this movie, I don't think they did enough with that. And I don't think they worked it out to make it satisfying and a big enough payoff and, and just intellectually stimulating enough. And then there'll be people who'll be like, oh, you didn't get it. I got it. I understood the movie. Because when the sci-fi element really starts to kick in at the last, you know, 10, 15 minutes and at the very ending, the very ending I thought was a, is a letdown. It's a head scratcher maybe, but then you think about it and you're like, okay, I get what happened, but why did it happen? You know, what does it mean? And they want you to sit there and think about it, but it doesn't, I like ambiguous endings where like it makes you think, but then you're like, oh, that's what it means. You know, this has some sort of big meaning, but it, it, with the ending of Another Earth, it's trying to pull that off, but it's just really kind of leaving you feeling unsatisfied. And even if you are going to sit there and probe and think about it, you're going to be like, oh, big fucking deal. What? What are you trying to say by this ending? And I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just saying, what the fuck are you trying to say by this ending? You're not trying to say anything. You're like, I'm not going to do the work. I'm going to let you try to figure it out. But you didn't figure it out in your head first. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, generally, it was a good job by uh, debut director Mike Cahill and Britt Marling, who stars in it. She, like, produced it, wrote it. They did generally good, like, I was interested, it was interesting, it's an interesting premise, you know, kind of a thing we've seen before with, like, someone fucks someone over and they try to befriend them, but I liked it, and I liked the performances, and then I'm just like, well, it's gonna, like, it's gotta go somewhere awesome, this was, like, a big deal, sort of, and it didn't, it really didn't, and you could criticize me all you want for that, be like, you don't fucking get it, whatever. Some of the best sci-fi movies of the last couple of years have been by Duncan Jones, okay? And he makes sure there's a satisfying ending, and it kind of wraps it up, or pushes it forward, or makes you excited about what you just saw, and makes you not just think, but be excited about what you just saw, and give a fuck. And the ending doesn't let you down. Look at Moon. Look at uh, his follow-up, uh, one of my favorite films of last year. What the fuck was that one on the train? Where they had the eight minutes over and over and over. Source Code. Look at Source Code. That was always really exciting and fast-paced. and But it was also, you know, 
and it's kind of action packed and crazy shit going on and it has a nice resolution but it was also just as you know intellectually stimulating and you know it had just as much brains as it had anything else well here this is just kind of like let's be an indie film and uh we'll throw all these things in there and see how they work and you're like well you didn't like you have to kind of work it out yourself if you're gonna make this shit um you know, I, I can't help but, like, compare it to what Duncan Jones has done where he really puts in the work on it, you know? And here it's just kind of like, well, we're going to put the work in on the human drama and then we don't have to worry about the plot. The plot is for fucking people that don't give a shit about, you know, stuff. Like, don't give, don't give a shit about, like, real cinema or real storytelling. It's not about plot. It's about character. I agree with that, but... Having a good plot goes a long way towards making it satisfying, memorable, you know, worthy of more discussion. People are going to fucking remember it. Um, you know, sorry to go and rant about that, but I just, it's, it's, I think that's, there's truth to that. Like, yeah, characters are number one, but plot is number two, okay? Plot is number two. You know, I think plot goes above uh, cinematography. It goes above music. Yeah, there's films that work as a, you know, uh, a celebration of the medium. And it isn't really totally about plot. You know, think of the tree of life. But for the most part, the plot matters too, okay? And I know plot arises out of character and this and that. But here it was just like I was so interested in these characters... And the plot was kind of good for the most part, but he didn't bring it all together. And, you know, the other elements weren't particularly, you know, I think I remember kind of liking the music, but I don't remember it. So, the cinematography, it, it looked like low budget, like it looked pretty indie for the most part. Like there's some little special effects here and there, like where you'll see the other earth in the sky, if you want to call that a special effect. Which I'm sure there's people on YouTube that could do that shit. But. It didn't. The plot wasn't totally worked out. And they're like well. We're, we're indie. We're throwing this big US ending out there. And people are just going to be like that's genius. I'm sorry it's not genius. There's not a. Whole lot of thought that went into the ending of this film. And I was willing, at the point where it was about to end, if it had a great ending, I would have really, really loved this movie. So I'm not saying not to see it, or that I didn't like it. I actually did like, I actually liked another, there, I said it, I liked the movie. But, the ending was weak. And it comes down to it, I put a lot of thought into it, I didn't want to call it that. I'd rather just call it ambiguous, because I like those types of endings. But this is an ambiguous ending that is weak. It didn't think of all the possibilities you could have done with this premise and everything you'd been to up to this point, you could have done so many cooler things. And like I said, all you have to look at is the sci-fi that Duncan Jones has done over the last couple of years with Moon and with Source Code. Those those movies don't just kinda like at the end like that was pretty cool, wasn't now just uh we're gonna end with like fucking nothing. Like, you know, I, I try not to spoil anything, but anyways, uh, you know, like film wise, it's like as a film, you're going to be impressed by the performances and the premise and story wise, you're going to be into the drama of this girl who fucked up and her trying to make it better with this guy who's fucked up from what she did. So you're going to be into the premise you mean, the human story. And you'll probably get into the sci-fi part of it, which is kind of in the background, but it never is really uh, developed in a way that it could have been. There could have been something more. I mean, if I thought about it long enough, I could come up with something. But the bottom line is, it's not my movie, so fuck you. I ain't going to waste my time. So that's my thoughts on it. It's a good movie with a weak ending. It could have been a lot better. All right. 
I think fans of sci-fi or fans of indie drama should check it out. But with that caveat, it's a it's a three. I'd say three and a half out of five stars. Anyways, I've gone for 15 minutes. Thanks for watching, guys.